I love that little video. I wish I could draw as good as that person does, especially with it. One of those uh, dry erase pens. That's amazing. Welcome to worship, everyone. Um, if you are new to worshiping with us, I am Reverend Craig Yoshihara, and I am fortunate to be the pastor here at Berkeley Methodist United Church. Um, we are meeting only online, and that is because we love you all and want to keep you safe. So we hope that you are staying safe uh, and just know that that you are in our thoughts and prayers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just share a couple of announcements. I did forget to, one is we have online giving. And we'll, like I said, we'll go over that. Um, you can just go to our website, bmuc.org, and you'll find a, uh, and I'll put a, I should put a link to it on the homepage. Uh, but you'll find in the new section uh, an article all about online giving. And if you follow us on Facebook, um, you'll find a post once a week, just linking you to that to make it easy for you, just in case you have questions about what it is. And you can always, always, always ask me, just send me an email or a text or something and ask if, whatever questions you might have. Um, we wanna make you feel comfortable with it, but hopefully this will be something that makes things easier for a lot of you. Um, and if you like the, if you like how we've done it in the past with just sending us an envelope, please feel free to keep doing that. That is totally fine. Uh, the other thing is uh, we're going to pause our Wednesday night social hour. Um, I know a lot of our choir folks are super busy, even if they're not in meetings. Um, they're practicing and, and, and trying to prepare for the big recording. And so, um, as that process is going on, we're going to go ahead and just pause the Wednesday night social hour for a little while and start it back up afterward. Um, I'm really excited to see what Naomi and the rest of the district crew are going to um, be sharing. And uh, I'm sure you all will be too. So it sounds like it's going to be fun and really great. All right. Having shared all that, I'm going to turn things over to Cheryl and uh, Cheryl is our worship leader this morning. I'm going to ask her to go ahead and start us off with a prayer. Cheryl. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Cheryl Calpon, and I'm probably the goofiest one, but it'll be okay. Craig assures me it doesn't matter. So <laughs> please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, uh, we come with gratitude for your presence today in our service. Um, I personally am really grateful that everybody um, that everybody that's here is um, looks great and um, is healthy. Um, I'm grateful for your uh, beautiful day that you've given us, and um, and I pray that you watch over those people that have not um, been able to join us. Uh, please help us to find joy in in this this week. Um, there's a lot going on. You'll hear a lot about it in our prayer later, but um, we know that joy really only comes from, from you, and we're grateful for all that you've given us. Um, please bless our service and continue to keep everybody in your heart. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Cheryl. That was great. I'm going to turn things on over to Naomi. She's going to share with us a little bit about our first um, our first uh, musical piece this morning. So, Naomi, it's all yours. Hey, thank you. Good morning, everyone. This morning, we are actually starting with one of our, as I call it, great hymns of the faith. Um, I'm not sure how I got to starting to call you know the songs that that come from you know our the old Methodist hymnal. But um, this is one that, you know, it's just most of the messages in here are so timeless. And this is blessed assurance. I think that's um, definitely a message that we all just need to be reminded of that we do have God's assurance that he's caring for us and that we can always think back to all the times that he has and just continue to remind ourselves and each other of that, of that, of the story of how, how many times 
um, God has been there for us. And so I hope that you will feel free to sing along on Blessed Assurance. We have Naomi and Iman leading us this morning. So the lyrics will come up for you and Jill's going to play that video for us. So I hope that you will um, feel just feel free to sing out because I know that many of you are, are super familiar with this favorite. I muted so I could sing. So sorry about that, everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I love that song. And Naomi and Iman do a, a really wonderful job of blending together their voices with Naomi's music. It came out really nice. As we do our prayers of the people this morning, uh, I want to remind you that, if, especially if you're new with us, um, to please share your prayers in the chat box that is on Zoom. Um, you can even do it on Facebook, and we'll be sure to include it in our weekly email of prayer requests. But uh, it really helps if you put your prayer requests in the chat box so that I can make sure that we we cover everything um, and that we lift things up in prayer. So the, the way we'll do it is um, as we lift up prayers, um, we'll say together, Lord, hear our prayers. So I'm going to um, start off with a, a few that I had wanted to make sure that we lifted up. Um, prayer requests for all of the people affected by the explosion in Beirut. Uh, it was horrific with um, over 150 people dead, 6,000 people injured, and it's affected 300,000 people now who are homeless in that area. So 
please keep the people of Beirut in your thoughts and prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, Liz wanted to um, ask us to please lift up prayers and condolences for the family of Mamie Hidasawa, who passed away on Wednesday. Um, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, we've had over 5 million cases of coronavirus in just the United States. Um, unfortunately, California has had the most cases overall. Uh, Texas has had almost 20% positivity rate. That's just an alarming amount. So as the pandemic continues to, to just rip through our country, we just want to keep in prayer um, all those affected by it all those who are trying to protect us from it. Um, and we just pray for wisdom for the people who feel like this isn't a thing. So just continue prayers for everyone as we battle this pandemic. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Lee asked us to please keep in mind the, it's been 75 years since the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And although those who survive the blast um, are, are fading away, hopefully our, our memory of that is not. And the fight to rid the world of these weapons continues on. Lord, hear our prayers. Um, Pauline asks us to continue to pray for uh, nursing homes everywhere. And for those who have pre-existing conditions who are at risk um, and are putting them at risk also. Uh, thankfully, I, I'm always glad, Pauline, by the way, I'm just really glad that you keep updating us. Uh, I, I have been praying for your mom and your aunts, and I'm just glad that, that so far they've been asymptomatic. For, if you don't know, Pauline's mom and aunts have been tested positive uh, for COVID-19. And uh, thankfully, though, are not showing any symptoms. Um, please continue to keep Cassie's grandma in prayer. Uh, Todd, as you know, we prayed for her earlier for being in the hospital. And she got out for a little tiny bit before going back in with bleeding. Um, they have not yet been able to stop it. So just please continue to keep her in prayer um, and wisdom and guidance for her doctors as they look to find what's going on. So Lord, hear our prayers. Well, we want to lift up a prayer of blessing for Sarah and her marriage. That's always, that's always something wonderful to be able to celebrate. So Lord, hear our prayers. Um, I did want to especially lift up a prayer for our schools as they are starting again. Um, prayers for the students who are, at least in our area, I know most of our students are starting virtually. Um, for those that are not, just especially prayers of safety um, for both the teachers and for the students. Um, and prayers that we're able to adapt to this new way of learning. And uh, so we just continue to lift up teachers, students, and parents in our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Naomi wanted to lift up a uh, prayer of thanksgiving for the Bay District Virtual Choir. Um, I, I know we're, I keep hearing stuff about it and, and I'm really excited to, to find out. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what you all do, uh, but just continue to keep them in prayer and, uh, and, a, and thanksgiving that, that we have this opportunity, especially for our folks who love singing, to have an outlet to still lift up God. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Pauline wanted us to keep uh, keep the Oakland schools. It starts tomorrow with distance learning. I know that Emma School in Berkeley will start the week after. Um, I know that we have teachers in our midst. Cheryl, I'm thinking of you specifically. Uh, and so we just want to keep every keep them all in our prayers, Lord. Hear our prayers. Let's go ahead and um, say a prayer to God together. If you would bow your heads with me, let's go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious Lord of us all, 
in these trying times, we have so many things going on that we are often distracted. We are often filled with anxiety or caught off guard. We are adapting to, to new things. It seems like all the time. As we try to settle in, we find out that things are changing on us all over the place. And so as we continue to adapt to our rapidly changing world, we pray that we will keep you always at the forefront of our prayers. That we will keep you at the top of our minds. And when we make choices and decisions in life, they are with thoughts of you in mind. How you would lead us, what choices you would have us to make, how we can better love you and love our neighbor. And in so doing, show the love of Christ to a world that needs it, especially today. We want to, Lord, lift up to you all the things that we shared together in worship, but also the things that maybe are on our hearts that we didn't share aloud. And so we pray, Lord, for all those who need you today, for those that were spoken of and unspoken. We lift up prayers of praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings that we have, some of which you shared and some of which are just constant blessings that we lift up to you. And we do this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is a kingdom the power, the glory forever. Amen. Oh, I'm always encouraged with the special music that uh, Naomi helps coordinate to bring to us. And so today we've got um, something fun. So Naomi, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you. This morning, uh, we have Stephanie Suzuki sharing with us again. And this is a song that um, I know that sometimes we sing in our in worship. Um, it's a song that I kind of remember even teaching to our young people um, some years back. And so it really means a lot to me personally. Um, it, it's an awesome song. It's Mighty to Save. And, you know, the song, sometimes, you know, I get so caught up in, in how the melody is and, and things like that, since I love music so much that I forget to take a look at the lyrics. and as I'm just reviewing the message of the song, you know, it's really about um, the miracles, about God, about our Savior moving mountains, about um, having victory over the grave. And then the song goes into a section about how we can be the light and the beacon that shines this story and this reminder both to ourselves and to those around us. And I think that's just such a great reminder that you know maybe you can't always be a beacon of light but any chance you get when you can remember um you know all the ways that you've experienced miracles in your life that that's an opportunity just to share and to shine your light so let's um enjoy and you can also sing along with uh, stephanie singing mighty to save
I have to do a better job of making sure that when I'm singing, I, I'm close to the unmute button. Uh, I really enjoyed being able to sing with sing along with that. That was really great. Mighty to Save is one of those songs that just really always resonates. So uh, thank you, Stephanie, for uh, creating that for us. Um, <clears throat> before we get into our, our prayer for the time of offering, I'm going to show you a, a short video about how we can give online. Um, wanted to make sure that everyone felt comfortable about it and about what, uh, what it is, what it's like on Tithely to be able to give. I'm also going to include a link in the chat box that when you click it should bring you to the Tithely page um, where you can just give directly from your website uh, to our church. So here's a short video about giving. And all I have to do is find it. There we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Tithely. As our world becomes more digital, we want to make giving to the church as easy as possible for you. So here's a quick way to give online. If you don't yet have the Tithely app on your device, first, go to the App Store and search tithe.ly for both Apple and Android users. Once it is fully downloaded and opened, the welcome screen will ask you to log in. Now, if it's your first time giving on the app, you can create an account by simply entering your name and email. Then come up with a personal secure password and PIN for double security. Tithely will securely store your information so that future giving is easier. From this main screen, you can find your church two ways. First, if you're sitting in church, simply click Find the Nearest Church, and the app will use your location. Then click Give Now to continue to the giving page. Otherwise, you can type the name of your church in the search bar, select yours, and click Give Now to continue to the giving page. The app will then ask for your credit card information and save that to your account to make future giving easier. Now, simply enter the amount you would like to contribute to your church and press give. It's that easy. And if you'd like to set up recurring contribution, you can simply select recurring giving. Now that you've set up your account, giving will be even easier next time. You won't need to enter your name or credit card. All you do is log in, select your church and give. Although this way of giving may be new for you, you are still honoring the Lord with your contribution. Well, of course, even uh, though we have fancy technology to help us with giving, um, it's still all about God. So I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl to lead us in a prayer about giving. Cheryl? <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, you've just given us so much homes to live in, clothes to wear, food to eat, um, in our health and our church. We're grateful for all that you've given to us and all our many blessings. We're also grateful for the gifts that you've given to us. And I pray that um, we will use our gifts to serve others, to help others, to think of others, and to, to be leaders and representatives of Jesus's hands and feet. Um, again, thank you for all that you've given to us. And um, I pray that you'll use our gifts um, to better serve your world. Amen. Amen.
scripture reading today comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 10. And this is a reading from the New International Version. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a mean to a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is a great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and, tra and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many grace, with many griefs, excuse me. Um, we give thanks for God's word. Amen. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Um, I'm going to tell you a short story. Once upon a time, there was a preacher. He was a real hard-nosed, fundamentalist type of preacher. And this adult video store was about to open up in town. So he was determined to stop it. And he rallied the congregation. He preached on, on the evils that would come from this place. And he started even started a prayer group to pray for the destruction of this place before it even began. He prayed that, that God would strike down this establishment and before it could even be built. And lo and behold, just two weeks before the store was about to open, a lightning storm came out of nowhere, struck the store, and burned it to the ground. Well, the pastor was pretty pleased with himself, as was the whole congregation, until they were served with the notice that they were going to be sued by the owner of the video store on grounds that the church was responsible, either directly or indirectly, for the demolishment of the building. Well, the church, of course, denied all responsibility about the destruction. And as a case made its way into court, the judge had a puzzled look on his face. And he looked at the paperwork and said, you know, I, I don't know how I'm gonna decide this case. From what I'm reading here, I've got an adult video store owner who believes in the power of prayer and an entire church that does not. Do you put your money where your mouth is? Do you put your money where your mouth is? These people didn't. Even though they had evidence of God's power right before their eyes, they chose their pocketbook over God. You know, you've heard it said that money is the root of all evil, but that's not actually the same. As Cheryl read for us this morning, it's the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. There's a difference. Money itself is not evil. Um, it's our own elevation of it. it. It's us putting the pursuit of it above everything else. And that's what gets us into trouble. Not the money itself, but when we elevate the material and downplay the spiritual. When we elevate the material and downplay the spiritual. Now, if you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone, I'm going to encourage you to follow along. Um, we're going to read from 1 Timothy, beginning in chapter 6, verse 17. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Now, if you don't have a Bible handy, I'm going to encourage you to, to bring a Bible to worship. Of course, I have my my background on, so I'm not sure if you can see it. But um, yeah, I want to encourage you to, to have a Bible handy. Uh, it's always great to be able to follow along. Um, if you have a Bible, especially for worship, you can make notes and kind of, you know, just 
kind of keep track of the thoughts that are going through your head as we shared together uh, these different stories in the Bible. Now, the letter we're going to read today is from a group called the Pastoral Letters that Paul is writing to um, disciples Timothy and Titus, who are leading churches in their own areas. And, and the reason that they're called Pastoral Letters is if you read the, this entire First Timothy letter, um, it's like a mini booklet on how to run a church. First Timothy could be a pamphlet on church leadership. He talks, Paul, Paul talks about everything from how to lead worship to the qualifications for a deacon, to how to treat the elderly. But today we're going to focus on Paul's teaching about giving. Now in this passage we're going to share, Paul offers advice to Timothy about how to preach it on true wealth, what true wealth really means, and that we often confuse material wealth and spiritual wealth. So as you read this passage with us, I'm going to just encourage you to listen for how that challenges and speaks to you. So please, hear now the word of God. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so they may take hold of the life that is truly life. The word of God for the people of God. The people said, thanks be to God. Have you ever asked yourself, uh, what if you had a million dollars, right? If I had a million dollars, what would you do? with it. I think we've all daydreamed about that at some point. You know, this huge windfall fell into our laps. What would you do with it? There's a whole song on it from the, the group Bare Naked Ladies. I know it's a funny name called If I Had a Million Dollars. And it's definitely one of their most popular songs. Basically, it's just a, it's just a list of things that they would buy if they had a million dollars. And some of the things are hilarious. Like I, I love, uh, they'd buy a llama and an emu. Uh, they'd buy a K car, a nice reliant automobile. Uh, and uh, maybe the funniest one is really expensive ketchup to go with their craft dinners. Like the band, I think most of us would not only buy things for ourselves, but for other people too, that we would share the wealth in some way. There's nothing wrong with daydreaming about getting a windfall of money or, or even on splurging on ourselves once in a while. The danger, as Paul writes to Timothy, is to put our hope in wealth, or anything else for that matter, over God. The danger is to put our hope in wealth over God. It's to make the mistake that thinking that a, a car or a job title or a hot looking spouse will bring you long lasting happiness. There's nothing wrong with having a nice car or being rewarded for your hard work or for that matter, having a hot looking spouse. But if your goal is to achieve those things as a means to lasting happiness, you'll be disappointed. Someone always has more. Someone always has a better job or a better car or a better something. You can't keep up with the Joneses because the Joneses always have more. You know this, right? I mean, you know this. In your head, you know it's to be true. It's not only logical, but you've experienced it for yourself. So why are we talking about it? It's like, these are common sense things, Craig. Why bother? Because we still make these mistakes from time to time. We still forget to put God first. We still forget to put forward the things that really matter. Sometimes we wait until it's too late. 
worshiping together is about being the community of Christ in the world and the family of Christ for one another. Worshiping together is about being the community of Christ in the world and the family of Christ for one another. And so we need to take time once in a while to remind ourselves of what is really important, what really matters. In these crazy, wacky, wild days, I, I keep hearing stories of pastors and churches who are an embarrassment to the rest of us. They, they claim that if you don't worship in person that you lack faith. But I think that instead they lack faith that God is honored no matter how we conduct worship. I don't think God rewards us acting recklessly or without thought. I think God takes it seriously when he tells us to love our neighbor. I have seen too many people complain and bemoan not being able to sing in worship. Well, we sing every week. They should come join us. I don't know. To think that God is so limited that you have to be in a specific building around specific people to honor God is kind of crazy. With so much added stress going on with so many things around us, it's easy for us to shift priorities and to forget what's really important. But God pretty much makes it simple. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. That is a simple formula for success in all things. As, as Jesus told the expert in the law, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Everything rests on loving God and loving your neighbor. No amount of money or power or fame is going to bring you peace. You might think it does, and maybe for a short while it will. But in the long run, you're never going to find that kind of peace that passes understanding that Paul talks about. Really, it's how we use what we have that makes a difference. No matter how much or how little money, power, or fame that we have, it's how we use it that will change the world. I'm hoping that we'll really pray about how we, as the Church of God at BMU, can use the resources we have, both individually as just regular old people and as a church to impact our community, our neighbors, and everyone we meet. You know, for, for those of you who've lost jobs or had to take a cut in pay or having to worry about meeting critical needs, by all means, you should take care of those things first. But if you have the means, if you're able to do more, then this is the time to do more. not just for our church, not just through money, but time, your talents, and your service. You don't have to be rich to make a difference. Now, you know, I have a bunch of friends, uh, like my friend Andrea, she's going to volunteer to serve at a polling place during the election. I know Julia's mom, June, had been making masks for friends and neighbors. She even sent a bunch to the church that we sent out to those who might need it. Um, on our Wednesday night social hour last week, Andy was telling me about how his wife Naomi was helping out with the Bay District Virtual Choir and sending out soundtracks to musicians who are gonna take part. We can all find ways to love God and love our neighbor. We don't have to be well off to do it. As a church, we are pretty well off. We are fortunate, we don't have a mortgage, we don't have loans, 
we have a pretty nice savings account built up. We have over $400,000 in our account. And, and as I mentioned in our monthly newsletter and in our sermon, uh, one of our sermons last month, I really want to challenge us to do more. With our resources, we could certainly think of ways to impact our community, to truly love our neighbor. But how else? And we'll talk about more, we'll talk about that more next week, about some of the ways in which we could really make an impact. But how else might we help one another? Cassie had a great idea. She suggested doing a, a neighborhood pantry. It's kind of like if you've ever been by Lee Mars's house, Lee and and Deacon Mike, um, they have one of those cute little lending libraries um, right outside. So this is a lot like that. It's a little bit bigger, but it's basically a little food pantry. So if you've got extra canned food that you don't need, um, you can put it in there. And if you need something, you can just come by and take what you need. Uh, Cassie was showing me an article and, and different organizations have been doing this, different people have been doing this. And remarkably, they, they seem to never run out. It's not a food, it's not a, a full food distribution, um, but it's basically a little library of canned goods for people who need it. So I love this idea. What are other ways that we could creatively use the resources that we have, not just our finances, to love our neighbor? In troubled times, it's really easy to just hunker down and, and hole up. Uh, we have a tendency to get into a horde mentality and turtle up, to withdraw, and to be more fearful about being generous. We start worrying a lot more about where our money goes and, and what it goes to. So while we should physically keep our distance and wear masks, so please do that, uh, that doesn't mean we have to stop being the church. There's a world out there that needs us right now. This is the time. As we talk about giving, I know that for some of us, it's a challenge. And if it's a challenge for you, then by all means, take care of your, your critical needs first. But in whatever way you can be generous, whether it is with your, your gifts or your time or your effort, do so because the world needs it now more than ever. This is the time for us to be the hands and feet of Christ. That doesn't mean you should give up food and rent. It means that if you have the means, and not all of us do, that this is the rainy day that we've been waiting for. This is when we can make a real difference in someone's life. I was uh, thinking about my cousin, Matthew. He's a second cousin, actually. And he had every economic advantage in the world. His folks were, were pretty well off. When he turned 16, they bought him a brand new car. When he graduated from high school, they paid for him to go backpacking across Europe with a bunch of friends, and they paid for it all. Uh, my uncle, my second uncle, great uncle, bought a, a camper just to take Matthew and his friends to concerts all over the country. I think I might have been concerned, though, when Matthew started collecting guns. I remember uh, my uncle talking about it and mentioning that on, on the, the back of his bedroom door, he had a rack and it was filled with different kinds of guns. I, I don't know, a 21 year old with a collection of guns seems like a recipe for disaster and it was. Um, one morning, a neighbor heard gunshots being fired from Matthew's apartment and called the police. And when the police got there, Matthew came out wielding two weapons, one in each hand. When they asked him to put the weapons down, 
he instead raised them toward the police and they shot him down. Suicide by cop is what some people call it. Intentionally creating a situation where you'll be killed. We tend to think having money will solve our problems or, or fame or influence or power, but it doesn't. The peace that comes from a relationship with God, the love of family and friends, there, there's nothing that can replace those things. I don't know if, if Matthew had a church community, if it would have helped him. But I do know that having money didn't prevent this tragedy from happening. Money, influence, fame, these are not the things that bring you deep and lasting happiness. Invest in those things that will really make a difference. Your faith, your family, your friends. Make sure you keep in mind what matters most in life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, you know, it's a little bit heavy, but we're going to go ahead and close with a, a song that I know is going to be really beautiful. So I'm going to ask Naomi to share a little bit about this. Naomi. Thank you, Reverend Craig. It's just a powerful message for all of us, you know, to remember, um, the ways that God has blessed us, um, and and to be able to find the ways that we can give back, you know, through our church and, and through the different, just there's so many different ways that we can give. And I love all the different examples you shared with us. Um, this song, it's um, what we call a newer hymn. So it's sort of in a, you know, a traditional hymn style, but it was written more, you know, contemporarily. And I love this one. Um, it starts, the grace of God has reached for me and pulled me from the raging sea and I am safe on the solid ground. And sometimes we just need that reminder that we are on solid ground, even when, you know, it just may feel like everything around us is moving. And I think from day to day, we experience that. We have a lot of uncertainty, um, but we are actually on solid ground. And then the song is just about, you know, praising God for that. So I hope that you will enjoy this song as much as I love the song. I know we've sung it a little bit um, together this past year um, when we were able to meet in person. So maybe it'll kind of ring a bell, but um, I'm just so happy to share this hymn with you this morning as we close our, our service.
Wow. Um, that was really, Naomi, that was really nice. Uh, as we talked about giving in different ways, um, this whole worship can't happen without the efforts of so many different people. Um, not only are we blessed to have Naomi and Jill on staff who are who put together so much of what happens behind the scenes and in front of the screen, uh, but then we have worship people who volunteer like Cheryl, who helps to lead us, um, like Naomi and Iman and Stephanie, who helped sing, uh, for people like Kathy and Irene, who shared our music together today. Um, worship is something that we do together. Not just we all come together like this, but it's also something that we participate in together. And I'm grateful that you all decided to share your gifts in this way. And so I give a lot of thanks to all of you um, for taking part. As we finish up this morning, let it be with that spirit of gratitude in our hearts. Um, let it be with a gratitude toward God about what God has done for us and the blessings God's given. And let that encourage us to go out and do what we can for those around us to really find a way to love our neighbor. Whether you live near the church or you live far away and you drive here, um, wherever you live, wherever you're at, think about how you can impact your community. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ who gave us all. Amen.